Ladies, welcome. I have Sherry in the studio today and we are starting a series called Life Verses for Women. So I've invited some women in that I wanted to share a verse in the Bible that has meant something to them and impacted their life. And so Sherry today is going to share hers. So hello, Sherry. Hey, Welcome. Hi, Tracy. So what's your verse? Share it with us. Okay, well, my verse is Luke 6, 32 through 33. And it is, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do that. Ooh, this mm -hmm. is a good verse. Okay, so I'm Tough hearing one. something about, you know, the difference between loving those that are easy to love, loving those that are harder to love, and what makes us different as Christians versus people of the world. Yes. So um, when I, 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 let's, just going back a little bit. So Luke wrote this. Okay. Um, and at the time, you know, there were the followers of Jesus. So Jesus had come, Jesus had died on the cross, and there were these people that had started to follow that he was truly the Messiah. Okay. Um, so we have those people. They were actually what we would call the early church okay. and didn't even really know that they were. Okay. So then we have the Jews mm -hmm. who did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. And so really there was this um, conflict mm. of who is following the true God. Okay. So this is kind of the audience that Luke is talking to? Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, it wasn't... It was a difficult situation, mm -hmm. and and this at the time was, I mean, again, raising the bar. Okay. Challenging of, the hearers. Yes. Okay. All right. So tell me what about that scripture has impacted your life? Why has that been a life verse for you? Right. Well, um, when this verse really kind of hit home for me, um, I was going through a time in my life where there were there was a relationship that I had that the, a person was being purposely mean to me, hmm. and um, I know it's hard to believe, but no, <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> but no, um, but really, and I was like, there was um, just this part of me that thought, you know what, I'm just gonna kind of back off okay. from this and. And um, I had just kind of apathy towards the situation. Hmm. And what I found is that wasn't really changing things, but I didn't feel challenged to do anything more. Okay. And I read this verse hmm. and I was like, no, <laughs> you know, let that apply to me. <laughs> that can't apply to this situation. Right. And certainly God um, continued to just lay this verse on my heart to the point that I have actually made a... Um, uh, a in frame. a frame so that I could keep it on my desk and just really be constantly reminded of what see that. what God's um, standard was for, okay. you know, and wanted me to apply to this situation. So Sherry, for you, I can only imagine, I think all of us can relate to situations where we've been hurt or wounded by someone. Yeah. And so then if you're looking at this verse and it's saying, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. But the challenge is being able to love those that aren't very lovable or have actually even been hurtful to us. So how did you start wrestling with that verse and then thinking about that person? How did, how did this verse change the way you viewed them or the way you viewed yourself? Right. Well, it, it was hard. It, you know, I, I had to start to think, you know, and why I chose, I mean, what really hit me about this verse is that um, it wasn't just if you love someone. I think that sometimes mm -hmm. we think of love passively, you know, it's the second part of that verse, doing good. Doing good. I mean, to me, that was really hmm. putting it into action to take away that apathy and to really do things that was going to mend that relationship regardless of how that person treated me. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. So what, let me just make sure, because I want to make sure people hear this, because I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time. This is really good. So what I'm hearing you say is that sometimes we can think a loving response is just to give that person space, kind of put up your boundary and just be like, that's fine. I'm not going to wish you ill will or I'm not going to be mean to your face. Yes. But I'm also not going to approach you or come toward you in any way. And what I'm hearing you say is the second part of the verse is the doing good 
to that person. So even taking action and putting yourself out there to mend the relationship, that that really is what is a loving response, what Luke's talking about. Yes. So how did you do that with this person? Um, so I had to think of what would be loving to them. Hmm. And that was, I think that that was where I got the most out of it, you know. Now, there were times it was hard. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where sometimes you're just like, you know, I had to rely on God's Holy Spirit and just say, you know, and that's um, in Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yep. Because sometimes I couldn't really do it on my own. But, but really putting myself like, because it's easy um, to love someone in a way that is easy for, for you. you. But I had to think what is going to be the what they would want. Right. And that might not be the easiest for me. Mm. And so what happened in that relationship as you tried to do good or tried to love them the way they needed to be loved? What happened in that relationship? You know, they're really... Um, I'm not going to say that everything turned out perfect, mm -hmm. you know, but God certainly filled me with a peace that mm -hmm. I was doing what he wanted. And, um, I, and I think that there, there has been definite improvement. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's something that all of us, I think can learn. We can only do our part, right? So yeah. you, you can reach out to that person, show love, be respectful, but the measure of success of that effort isn't based on what they do because you can't control that part. But at least exactly. you did your part to say, God, if there's going to be reconciliation, I'm going to make sure I'm on the side of working with you towards that instead of being the person working against it. And if yeah. the other person chooses never to really engage in that and the relationship never really mends because they're not interested in that, then that's okay. Yep. And so that's kind of where you are. You're just continuing to love and there's been some improvements, but it's not like your besties. Right. <laughs> running yes. around together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to share about that today? Um, I'm just going to say that this is not a normal response, yes. you know, and it's not and a natural response. It's exactly. It's not a natural response. And if you go to like other people and say, this is what's being done to me, most people are going to say, well, you should, you know, yeah. that's not right and that's not fair and you should say this or do this. And so I'm just going to say, you know, really make sure, go back, see what God's word says, you know, that's good. it's, it's calling us to love and to do good that's regardless good. of how we're being treated. Right. And, and the greatest commandments God's given us in the Bible are to love God and love others. Yeah. And so even back in Luke's time, when you had these two groups of people kind of warring for the um, moral right or superiority that what Luke was saying and what Jesus is saying, guys, it's about how we love and how you represent me is in how you love. And so thank you for sharing this verse. This was really good and, and a great challenge for me, especially like you said, that second part of the verse, the more the action step of love is doing things toward that end of building a bridge yeah. to reconcile. So ladies, I hope this was helpful to you. And I'm sure you, we all can identify someone, a situation that we've struggled in a relationship. Really think about this verse, use those questions below, have a conversation in your small group or with a mentor and see if God doesn't stir something in your own heart of some things you need to start doing towards mending fences. So Sherry, thanks for thanks. sharing your verse with us mm -hmm. and we'll see you in the next video.